In today's episode, I'm installing a gooseneck trailer hitch in the 1959 Chevy Viking pickup truck project. You're not going to want to miss it, so stay tuned. This is Challenge to Build. Hello everyone, welcome to Challenge to Build. As you can see here, I am in the beginning stages of installing the gooseneck trailer hitch into the truck. So you may wonder why I am putting a gooseneck trailer hitch into this truck. And my answer to that would be, well, why not? Uh, not only does this truck have a really uh, unique, awesome look going on with it, but it is also built like a tank uh, with the Caterpillar 3116 diesel in it, along with the big Eaton six speed and the big Dana 80 rear. I mean, this thing is built to, um, to be a, a heavy hauler. Uh, the frame is super heavy duty. So that is kind of the why the gooseneck is being put in. Uh, as far as the how, uh, I'm still trying to figure out the how part. Um, the foundation for the gooseneck trailer hitch is I went ahead and purchased um, a B&W fabricated, prefabricated gooseneck um, turnover ball. And then I'm just uh, adding my own framework uh, to it. What you see in front of me is I'm going to run my framework uh, across ways into the mid cross member back here. I have another mid cross member up in front uh, just behind the cab that I'm tying it into here. You can kind of see this straight bar here. And then I'm going to place the hitch down on top of all my framework and then proceed to weld everything around and then run some more angle supports from here up to the hitch and then gusset everything with some big D-rings for the chains. One day while I was at work on lunch break, I took the time to kind of sketch an idea out on some paper. I'll kind of spin it around so you can kind of see all angles of it. One of my requirements for building this bed and anything that has to go on back in the bed is to have everything underneath the bed of the truck and have it function as a regular pickup truck, not have any crazy C notches, no air tanks, no fuel cell, no anything. I mean, you're not even gonna be able to know that it has a gooseneck trailer hitch into it until the time comes when I need it. I'm gonna make a panel on the bed that covers that. So when I roll up, everything will be covered. Um, that is a big, big um, important factor for me as I was building this truck. Um, the air tanks are underneath. I got a K5 Blazer gas tank to barely squeeze in between the frame rails. Uh, the new hydraulic system that we're gonna be putting in to run the hydraulic rams to actually make this thing tilt up. So very critical. The tolerances are super tight. Um, it, it is coming together very nicely. Now what's gonna happen is I gotta finish cutting a few pieces, take it all apart, get everything cleaned up and get this bad boy welded in. All that's left for me is a lot of work and to simply challenge to build. Anytime you do work like this, what do they say? Measure twice, cut once. Well, double check and triple check yourself. Make sure that uh, your pieces are angled opposite directions or same direction, or make sure your notch is in the same spot or whatever it is that you're fabricating, um, whether it's a trailer hitch or who knows what else. Uh, anytime you need to make matching pieces, just always take an extra minute and double check 
and make sure that your marks and measurements are the same and your piece uh, is what you're gonna need. Uh, even if that means simply taking it up and walking over to whatever you're working on and simply holding it up and visualizing the piece in there, make sure you are good. Let me go ahead and uh, get my face shield and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut out the next piece. So after about a half hour's worth of cutting, grinding, sanding, and just prep work, it is time to finally put this thing back together. And uh, hindsight 2020, I probably should have spent the time cleaning each and every individual piece as I got it cut and ready to go. Because in the beginning of this video, I had everything kind of clamped up and positioned where I wanted, wanted it. But it's all part of the build and it's all part of the process. Um, not that it's a big deal, but it did take some time. So hopefully now that I have some reference lines, um, it should go a little bit smoother. And that's just a matter of setting everything back up, getting everything clamped together. And it's just a matter of squaring everything up. I got my center lines from when I did this the first time. Gonna happen. All right. Remember, there is no time limit on installing anything, so when you are working, take your time, double check, just like measuring and cutting, double check your squareness, your measurements left to right, front to back, your angles, visually look at it, make sure it uh, is visually um, pleasing to the eye. Sometimes you may have to tweak or fudge um, depending on what you're doing. Let's see. Uh, Next comes the square. That checks out. So that looks pretty good. So far it's going together a lot easier this time around. I guess everything's easier the second time, right? The first fender was a pain in the butt. The second one was a lot easier. It's just a matter of taking your time and uh, just slowly repeating the process over and over again. Those are clamped in. The reference lines really helped before I took it out. I made a few reference lines and even the reference lines, they're only reference lines, they're not exact. I kind of have things uh, changed a little bit. I came in a little bit farther. I took a piece of half inch plate and made lines resting. So this way here, I wouldn't have to modify it as much. Um, so we should be okay. And then now to install the front pieces. Ever since I broke my left hand, I have not had very good luck with clamping anything with my left hand. This I already know is out of square, but it's all right, we're gonna get that in there. I'm happy with that. Now, now all we have to do is get the second one in here, double check, triple check everything again, 
and then I think we might be ready. One more time. Little dab will do ya. All right, nobody breathe, nobody move. Everybody freeze. So this is where you would take a minute and just visually look and make sure that everything that you just worked on is legit. And I'll be honest, I like the way it looks. So there you have it. There's the sketch. And there is the result. And unfortunately, it is actually too late for me to weld this in because I don't know if you know this or not. Here's another little inside scoop for challenge to build. Um, I actually do all of my welding off of a generator. Um, I have not had the money to invest in getting a service big enough out into my garage yet to facilitate my welder, plasma cutter, and anything else that would take some serious power. I just run off of one 20 amp line. So for me to weld this in right now, I would have to fire up my generator and weld off my generator. And since it's a little too late at night, um, I am going to have to postpone this until tomorrow. So I will see you then. And now here we are on day two of the gooseneck install. I'm getting ready to fire up the generator and get this thing um, at least tack welded into position. Uh, the plan would be get the back of this tack welded together, run a few tack welds on the hitch plate itself, and then focus uh, moving forward to finally tack in the front, get everything tacked in, continue to check square, measure a couple times to make sure it stayed center. Um, obviously, even though it is um, heavier metal, uh, it still will move with the heat. So we wanna make sure that we uh, continue to check as we, uh, as we weld this in. Now that I have everything tack welded into position, I'm gonna check uh, square in a couple different locations uh, and then take a quick center measurement, make sure I'm still in uh, the area that I need to be and then focus up front and put a few tack welds up front and then methodically work my way through and start welding this in um, all the way. Uh, the welds didn't really move it at all. Everything checks out. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, work up front, get the front pack welded in, and then uh, continue on uh, welding this sucker in. So what you see me doing right now is I'm putting eighth inch spacers in between the frame and the cross member. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use that as like an eighth inch root pass. So that way, uh, I get a nice strong penetration, uh, penetrating weld in through this bottom one. And then I'll weld both sides. I'm gonna tack it, continue putting tacks throughout the, the hitch, and then come back and then fully weld the root pass, let that cool, and then come over it 
and then put another weld over top of it. So this way here, this is a nice and, uh, nice and strong joint. And then uh, continue on through the process um, where I need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack this now. <laughs> I got a little carried away. So another thing that I did too on this hitch plate, this hitch plate is half inch and I took the grinder and I beveled the bottom edge so that way I would get a nice uh, solid weld in underneath this as well. Uh, the hitch plate is actually sitting on the square tubing. And then the same thing as up front is I'm going to weld the first pass on either side, let them cool, continue jumping around to different joints that I need to weld. And then when it cools, come back and then weld the top seam uh, over everything. Um, this way here, it gives me good solid penetration and the strength that I need for this hitch. time to get my weld on. Woo! Like Ric Flair. Woo! Does anybody even know what I'm talking about? Leave me a comment and let me know. Well, there you have it. So after uh, quite a bit of welding, uh, which still isn't done, uh, I'm gonna let the, the, the metal cool down for a while, uh, but the hitch is installed and I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Uh, this is gonna wrap up uh, this part of the build and this episode, we're gonna call this part one of the build uh, in the second part of the gooseneck build. We're gonna to continue to uh, weld it in. We are going to add gussets and the D-rings for the chains. And then I'm also going to add gussets in the front up underneath and also down underneath the hitch in the front over here. So a uh, big monumental step in the right direction on this. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna let everything cool down, come back to it, uh, continue to weld on it. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of welding underneath that we're gonna have to do once we take out the rear and get this up on jack stands. If you wanna support Challenge to Build any more than just watching on YouTube, you can go in the description below and click the link that says Challenge the Build eBay store. That link will take you directly over to the eBay Challenge to Build store. You can go ahead and shop for any kind of merchandise that I have uh, listed in there. Anything purchased there will directly support this build and the future of Challenge to Build, so I thank you for that. Now what I want you to do is get up and go out and challenge your build. My name is Paul Michael. This is Challenge to Build. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode.